What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another one of Hoggy's Beer Reviews. Today, I bring you an English beer. I've been sitting on this beer for about a month or so now. I, I, haven't, I just haven't gotten around to it. It's been in the fridge for like two weeks already, and I keep getting other stuff. But we're finally here. We're finally at it. This is Wells Bombardier. Wells Bombardier. Obviously, this is from Wells and Young, the same people who make Young's Double Chocolate Stout and the Wells Banana Bread Beer. Matter of fact, see if you can uh, see it. Might be in there somewhere. Wells. I'm gonna keep that cap. That's a cool cap. I'm not too thrilled about the banana bread beer. I don't know if I'll ever try that because it's just not my thing. Sweet banana -y beer just doesn't really appeal to me. But this is an ESB, an extra special bitter, and that appeals to me. So we're drinking the Wells Bombardier. Now I have reviewed the um, Young's Double Chocolate Stout. That's um, just go through my channel. It's one of my earlier reviews. And now we're doing Bombardier. Um, again, yeah, I've been sitting on this for a while. I've even been called on it. Dennis, you know you've been waiting for this one. Um, Dennis reviewed it a while back too. Check out his channel. He does some good stuff as well. But um, getting to finally getting to the Bombardier, punching it up on Beer Advocate. It receives a B plus out of 196 reviews from, of course, Wells and Young in the uh, United Kingdom, categorized as an extra special or extra strong bitter, or ESB. And this is, let's see, yeah, uh, 5.20 ABV on here, 5.2 on the bottle. This is, of course, 1.9 pint, uh, pint fluid ounces. Um, and yeah. You know, I'm gonna, I just got out of work a little while ago, and I'm going to go wash my car when I'm done with all this, so I just wanted something to drink before I go out and do that. So here we are. Now, Wells Bombardier, it's an ESB. I like ESBs. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's an ale. It's just a bitter, stronger ale right up my alley. I'm uh, up on top. It says, Drink of England. Brewed in the heart of England. This is a richly rewarding, traditional, burnished copper ale bursting with English spirit. Cool. Sounds good to me. I like I like the English style when it comes to beer. Can't wait to travel to London. I'm just dying to go to England and, and you know sit in a real pub and have me a real pint. And of course I had to break out the British pint glass, where it actually has the uh, the the British royal mark for uh, a pint and the line for a half pint. Cool stuff. Ironically though, uh, ironically though the glass is actually made in France, but whatever. So we have that. We have a British beer. And to open it, since I want to keep the cap, I use, usually use the lighter when I want to keep the cap. I wanted to do something different today. I'm breaking out the wooden spoon. And uh, if anybody's laughing out there, these are great for taking the cap off without bending it. But uh, the thing is that these are bamboo spoons. We just picked up this set a couple weeks ago. The spoons I used to have are your regular cheapy wood spoons. And it actually chipped up at, from the bottom because it, the wood's kind of soft. This is a lot harder. It's bamboo. So they should do a better trick of taking the cap off. So off we go to drink NESB. And the cap is perfectly unscathed. Put that there. And of course, we have a smoky British beer. Hmm, yep. Looks like a darker copper color. Hmm, I can smell it already. Malty. And this is an imperial pint glass, so the whole thing's going in here. There we go. And voila. Ooh, man, yeah, that is a dark reddish copper color. Looks very nice. It's clear. I can see through it. It's not crystal clear, but it's, it's clear. And give a nice pinky finger of a... Uh, I don't want to say foamy. It's a bit soapy, yeah, but there's a lot of big bubbles in there. It's a bit fizzy, but it's a good-looking head, and it's a good-looking beer. You can see the active carbonation. There's not a lot of it, but there is definitely... No, there... Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of it. But still, it looks good. Mmm. Buttery, malty, with a hint of earthy, British, what is that, uh, Kent Golding hops, very earthy herbal, subtle note, and then there's a bready, buttery maltiness to it. Almost, it's, it's almost a, almost a fruity sweetness. 
Yeah, it smells good. I was drinking some old speckled hen last week, and this kind of reminds me of that because you get those British hops, you get uh, that British water. I'm not sure if this uses that same, uh, that same uh, what is it, Burton on Trent water or whatever it is. So it's a real hard water that gives a distinctive texture, you can say, to the beer. I'm not sure if Wells is uh, brewed in that area. Let's see if it says on the bottle here now. Uh, Wells and Young Brewery, uh, Bedford, UK, product of England. Uh, wow. Okay. And it, it says uh, contains malted barley. It's a good thing they told us. Anyways, enough with that. Let's just get right to the beer. It smells good. Mmm. It's thinner than I expected. For a beer this dark, I expected a little bit more body. And it's, it has character. I'm not going to say it's thin, thin, but it's, it's not that close to medium. It isn't. And the carbonation is really fizzy in your mouth. Again, yeah, it's bitter. And that bitterness, that herbly, earthy, hot bitterness hits you up front. It hits you on the end. I gotta say though, man, I'm disappointed. I expected a little more character to this beer, and the more I drink it, the more I realize it's thin. I can just kind of swirl it around my tongue, almost like water. There's not a lot of depth and body to this beer. And you know, I was worried about this being past dated, but no, I looked on here and it was, uh, you know, 04, 0410, so that's April 2010, so it's good. And yet, eh. It's fizzy, and yeah, there is a, a biscuity, bready quality to it, but I don't know, man. There's just not a lot going on. I'm getting, I'm getting yeast. I'm getting earthy hops. I'm getting a thin body. I'm not getting a lot of malt. I'm actually really disappointed. I expected something better from Wells & Young. This makes me think of, of a cheap bitter, something like maybe a Red Hook, you know? There's not enough, there's not enough depth here. Even the flavors, the malted flavors, it's subdued. It really is. You know what, I, I don't want to do it because this is Wells and this is British and this is all nice and good, but this is a glass half empty. I, uh... I really would never seek this out, and if you offered me one, I'd, I'd ask if there was anything else around, because it's just not that good. There's nothing off-putting about it, but it's just bland and weak and overly carbonated. It's, it's fizzy, it's watery, there's not enough flavor. I'm disappointed in the Brits. I really am. It's a damn shame. So yeah, guys, if you like ESBs, if you like a good British ale that's got a little kick and a little bitterness to it, don't buy this. Stick with the double chocolate stout. Still stick with the banana bread beer. When it comes to Wells, their ESB is underwhelming. I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed. Shoot, that's not good at all. I mean, it's not bad, but oh man, like it just the carbonation is still active. You know, it's like it's it's fizzy. It reminds me of an American lager, and that's not a good thing. So I mean, I'll leave it at that, guys. Wells. Thumbs down for Wells. Bombardier. Yeah, it bombed. That's for sure. And that'll be my parting, my parting words. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.